Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this Father's Day weekend. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and all the different people who are helping to lead worship today, we are so glad that you are here. This is a wonderful celebration weekend. It's Father's Day. It's also been the first week of our Adventure Explorer Summer Intergenerational Program and we're celebrating this week the kickoff of the His Home Bicycle Ride for His Home Orphanage in Haiti. So there's lots to celebrate today and we're so glad that you are here. If this is your first time worshiping with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, welcome. We're especially glad you have chosen Douglas Avenue to worship with this weekend. We hope that you will take just a couple of moments right now to fill out our contact form. It's right pinned in the comment section. And I want to encourage everyone, if it's your first time, your millionth time, whatever, with Douglas Avenue, to use that contact form today. It's a way to say that you're here. It's also a way that you can get prayer concerns and requests into our pastors and our prayer team. We love praying with you, so please uh, use that contact form today. One of the things that we do here at Douglas Avenue is we covenant and promise together as we worship to fully participate and to be a blessing. And what that means is that we covenant to participate. So go ahead and close down other distractions that might be open on your devices. Get close into your screen so you can see. Uh, you may want to light a candle to help you focus and, and make this time even more special. And we encourage you when we're singing to stand up and sing, when, it's, when we're praying to join with us in prayer and just fully participate in this time of worship. And then we covenant to be a blessing as well. And that means that the comments that we make are a blessing to everyone who's participating, that the way we're participating together in this worship is a blessing for everyone involved and to the larger community. So we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. Another thing that we do when we gather as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is to share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. And I encourage you to do that right now with those you may be gathered with, to everybody who's gathered here online. We've been learning American Sign Language to help us with that. The sign for peace is hands on top of each other and then flattened out, a transition to calm. So peace and then fist together, be with you and point. So let's share that peace together. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. I'm Julie Crable. I'm a member of the Bell Choir and have been on various committees. Hi, I'm Jan Crable and I'm a past member of the Trustees. Hi, I'm Ellie Crable. Hi, I'm Tom Crable. I'm a member of the Finance Committee and the Endowment Committee at the Church. Please join us in the call to worship. Your line is, Praise be to God. Let's practice that together now by saying, Praise, Praise be, be to, to God. God. The heavens are telling the glory of God. All of the heavens proclaim God's handiwork. All around us are signs and wonders, fingerprints of the Creator. Praise, Praise be, be to God. God. The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it. The world and all who live in it. All around us we find life. All the created world is related to us. Praise, Praise be, be to God. God. Let us dwell in God's work of art. Here in this amazing world, we are not alone. We share this life with the heavens, the earth, all creatures, and all the people. Praise, Praise be, be to God. God. Good morning, I'm Becca Philbrick and I'm the Director of Music and Ministries here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm here with Marcia Stout and Tom Philbrick. Please join us in singing God of Wonders.
Right, it is time for small talk with Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries and Laud the Lamb. So I want to encourage all of the children to come close, get in where you can see and hear everything. This is a favorite time for everybody in Douglas Avenue, but kids, we want you to get really close so you can see everything with small talk. And then I want to also let you know that following small talk, we'll be joining together in our base camp Adventure Explorers worship song for this week called the Hippo Song. So you're going to want to be ready to hop up and have a little room and join with us in that. But now it's time for Small Talk with Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud and his assistant, Cohen. And today we are here to talk about growing our faith. So adventure explorers all of you that are out there that have been doing our vacation bible school with us virtually and with your boxes you know that we've talked about the parable of the mustard seed mustard seed and what it takes to make things grow and if you add your sunlight and your soil and your water to that mustard seed and you care for it, it's gonna grow and spread. And our faith is kind of like that too. And our faith in God's kingdom. But it's really hard in about a three minute time frame to watch a plant grow. So we're gonna watch something else grow today. So we have some liquid here. It's a lovely blue color that Laud, I believe, chose. It's its favorite color. Uh huh. And we have, we have, this is like, think of these as seeds and our faith, okay? So let's say that this is our faith. And right now, yeah, it's little bitty, little bitty granulars in here of our faith. Not a whole lot here, but enough. Right? Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to put our faith in here and see if it grows? Want to? Yeah? Okay. Don't be scared. Don't be frightened. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? All right. And I'm gonna hold this up. Actually, I'm gonna move it up. And I'm gonna, actually, Law, do you think you could help pour those in? I don't know if it's gonna work very well, but we'll see, here we go. Ready? Oh my goodness. Look at how much our faith is growing. It's overflowing even. Our faith has grown so much. Wow, wow. That's amazing. How much when we follow God and follow Jesus, how much our faith can grow and spread. And believe me, it has spread. Yeah. Yeah. Probably should have gone with my first thought and done this outside, but it's really hot. So, our faith has grown. Something else that we have to mention today that helps us grow are our dads, because today is also Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of those dads and grandpas and uncles who help raise wonderful, beautiful children. We thank you. And you help us grow, help them grow. And a lot of times, you're a little bit more fun than us moms. I have to admit it. They are the ones usually doing the, <laughs> the messy things, the yucky things. So, but that helps us grow too. So, happy Father's Day, Dad. Continue to grow your faith, everybody. Okay, everybody. So, we learned the most fun song at Adventure Explorer Camp. And we want 
everybody to join us in singing Laud's very favorite song, The Hippo Song. All right, Adventure Explorers, our theme for this week is Time to Explore. And we are exploring God's creation and how it is that God reveals God's self in all this beauty that we see. Now, one of our favorite songs that talks about this is the Hippo Song. So we want you to stand up right where you are and join with us in singing the Hippo Song. We're going to do it uh, repeat after me style. Say that. Repeat, repeat after, after me, me style. And do as I do style. And do as I do style. So after me. In the beginning God made the seas. In the beginning God made the seas. And the forest filled with trees. And the forest filled with trees. He raised the mountains up so high. He raised the mountains up so high. And above it all he placed the sky. And above it all he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cares. Just to show how much he cares. And in the middle he had some fun. And in the middle he had some fun. Made a hippo that weighs a ton. Made a hippo that weighs a ton. Hip 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 hop hop to mus. Hip 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 hop hop to mus. Hip hip hooray God made all of us. Hip hip hooray God made all of us. Hip 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 hop hop to mus. Hip 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 hop hop to mus. Hip hip hooray God made all of us. Hip hip hooray God made all of us. Excellent. So we're learning this song, so let's do it one more time. Repeat after me style. Repeat after me style. And do as I do style. And do as I do style. In the beginning God made the seas. In the beginning God made the seas. And the forest filled with trees. And the forest filled with trees. He raised the mountains up so high. He raised the mountains up so high. And above it all he placed the sky. And above it all he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cares. Just to show how much he cares. And in the middle he had some fun. And in the middle he had some fun. Made a hippo that weighs a ton. Made the hippo that weighs a ton. Hip, 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 Jesus would often tell parable stories to help people understand God's kingdom. He would also use examples from nature to tell these stories, like in our Bible reading for today. Our Bible reading is Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. Jesus put them another parable. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. So the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Wise and wonderful, the 
we see that Jesus used parables, comparing stories, to help people learn and internalize eternal truths about God, God's purposes for God's people and the world and the overwhelming love of God that both is right now and is coming to fruition in the world. Jesus often describes this as the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is also pretty fond of describing this kingdom of God as a seed that grows into a beautiful plant or abundant crop. Jesus uses this image several times in his teachings, and you may know some of these describing stories or parables that Jesus tells. There's the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, 1, also in the Gospels of Mark and Luke where Jesus describes the kingdom of God as seed sown onto good soil and onto difficult soil. The seed thrives in good soil but struggles in the difficult soil. There's the parable of the planter in Mark 4, 26 through 29, where Jesus describes the kingdom of God as a seed planted in a field that grows on its own. And the planter doesn't know why it grows. There's the parable of the weeds and the wheat in Matthew 13, 30, 24 through 30, where the kingdom of God is like wheat growing up surrounded by weeds which can't be separated until the harvest. And there's today's story, the parable of the mustard seed in Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. And it's found again in the Gospels of Mark and Luke. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. What is it about the kingdom of God that is like a seed? The mustard seed that Jesus talks about in today's parable is itself quite small. We use them in cooking and that little mustard seed gives a lot of flavor. But the mustard plant itself can grow quite large from that little seed to be as tall as a person even. This might be what Jesus is talking about, how a small thing can make a big difference. Jesus uses a couple of other images for the kingdom of God that have a similar meaning, how a small thing can make a big difference. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Jesus tells his followers that they are to be the salt of the earth. Even though they are few in number, they will add a great deal of flavor to the whole. He goes on in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, and tells his followers they are to be light of the world. Even a singular lamp lifted onto a light stand lights the whole house, Jesus says. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a little bit of yeast that when mixed with a large amount of flour brings rise and life to many loaves of bread. 
with salt and light and yeast and seeds, Jesus seems to be saying that the kingdom of God is like a relatively small thing that makes a big difference. There have been many times in my life when a small action has made a big difference to me. I think many of us can identify a similar time when someone said a small word of encouragement, offered a small act of kindness, or provided just that little nudge of hope that carried us through, maybe even changing the whole fabric of our lives. I remember a college professor in my church history class, oh, though so many years ago, who mentioned to me that, you know, I think the United Methodist Church could use a minister like you. At the time, I was a piano performance major, and I was working toward a career in music and teaching and performance, and I hadn't thought of becoming a pastor. But he saw something else in me and mentioned it. His suggestion was perplexing, even preposterous to me at the time. But I couldn't put his words aside. They grew in me and I spent hours in prayer seeking God's help and understanding and in understanding this idea. God used that time of prayer and reflection, discernment and further conversation to grow the idea from a little seed into a firm conviction and calling as a pastor. Little seeds can grow to make a big difference. So what is this kingdom of God that grows so large from something so small? You know, it's really a pretty simple idea but it contains all of the DNA of the gospel. It can grow the entirety of the Christian faith just out of itself. It's the genetic code of Christianity, if you will. It's relatively small and straightforward and like a seed, it's often easy to overlook. I think the seed of the kingdom of God is this. God loves me and you. In our Wednesday Adventure Explorers Base Camp Worship, we end by inviting everyone to raise their right hand and recite the Adventure Explorers Pledge. And I'm going to invite you to do that with me now and hear that. So raise your right hand. And we say, I state your name. State your name now. I state your name. I, Meredith, promise to live as an adventurer explore my faith and world and always remember that God loves me and you. We end the pledge together by promising to remember this seed of the kingdom of God. God loves me and you. How does a relatively simple and short idea change so much? Well, one of the ways that the kingdom of God comes to life is that it grows from inside of you, inside of your heart. It begins as a sense that you are accepted, that you're worthy, approved, and beloved of God. That no matter what your life has been, what has happened to you, or what you've made of it, God loves you. That you, with all of your faults and triumphs, successes and failures, choices for good, choices for bad, that you are loved by God. This love has a way of changing us. When we begin to see ourselves as loved, we begin to think of ourselves as worthy of love. We begin to act in ways that might please God and we begin to treat ourselves as someone valuable and precious to God. This changes how we care about and love ourselves. And this love extends beyond ourselves for sure. If God loves me and you, then I begin to see you as a beloved, precious child of God. I begin to experience other people as family, 
tied together by a God who loves us all and sees my siblings as worthy of that love. Together we grow in compassion for one another and we seek to help and encourage each other to live as God's beloved family. This love moves us to work for each other's freedom and justice, to topple powers that might strip any of God's children of dignity and hope, to fight against forces of oppression and evil, to push back and resist anything that would deny any child of God, which is everyone, their opportunity to thrive and be loved. And then to build communities and systems, economies and ecologies, life together that reflects this truth, that all are beloved and precious children of God. Sometimes this process isn't so linear in our lives. It certainly can move back and forth through that expressed and activating love of all God's children and love for ourselves and God's love for all of us together and individually. It feeds on each other. But like a seed that grows, the love of God grows in our lives, into the lives of our neighbors, into the lives of our communities, until it is growing throughout the entire world. It's a simple idea, really, that God loves me and you. But it grows so large that it can change a life it grows so large that it can change the world. Amen. As we head into a time of prayer together, we're going to have pictures from this week's Assignment DAUMC Adventure Explorers Edition with pictures from our Explorers Backyard Photo Safaris and favorite things from our DAUMC families' backyards. As we prepare for prayer, receive these beautiful images that have been provided by so many in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family, and enjoy the music provided for us by Marcia Stout and Karis Brown. This is my Father's world.
Good morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the associate pastor here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And it is a true honor to serve the people of Douglas Avenue, and I welcome you this morning. It is now the time that we go to God in prayer. Douglas Avenue has always been a heavily praying church. Prayer is so important to our community of faith. We encourage you to share your prayer request on your contact card, or you can also put your prayer request on the Facebook live feed or email myself or Pastor Meredith. We will share your prayer concerns with our prayer team and we will hold your prayers um, close in our hearts in the coming week. I now ask you to bow your heads in prayer. Loving God whose power is beyond our scope and whose wisdom is beyond our understanding. We turn to you in faith assured that you know every one of our emotions and you are aware of all of our needs. We are so grateful for the privilege to come to you, God, in prayer. Praying together as a church family helps join our hearts together with you. Our thoughts and prayers today are turned toward our fathers. On this Father's Day, we give special thanks for each and every father. We're grateful for those who have provided strong and faithful care and love to children both young and not so young. We are thankful for the men who help build good and secure homes for children. We thank you for others that are in parental positions, such as grandpas and teachers, tutors and mentors, uncles and friends. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all who guide and shape our children. For those who have recently lost or who are facing intimate loss of their own fathers, or who have lost fathers long ago and feel sad. We find comfort coming together in prayer. For those who long for a father's presence in their life, be with them, O oh God. We rejoice with you for the many men who have taken the place of fathers and opened their hearts. And we join all fathers everywhere in praying that all children everywhere will find love and support from those around them. Next, O oh God, we ask for help for our country. As our country is struggling with race relations and injustices, show us how we are to love one another. Show us how we as white people with privilege can work for equality for all races in education and housing, public service in employment opportunities and with the legal and prison systems. Help us, O oh God, to understand. Help us to ask for forgiveness for the times that we have not been completely just. Give us strength and courage, O oh God, to speak out in the places that we see and know that there are injustices. And help us to work for the transformation of unjust systems so that we may more fully live out your kingdom here on earth. Loving God, we ask you to be with those among us that are struggling, struggling with whatever. It remains so difficult not to be together, to hug and to touch, to hold hands physically. But we're grateful, oh God, for this technology and to be able to connect in this way. Be with those that are lonely and in need of connection. Help us to know who and how to reach out to the lonely. Surround those that are sick with any illness and in need of your healing. Be with family members of the sick as our healthcare system remains so difficult to navigate because of the coronavirus. Hold tightly those that are in need, O oh God, those that are addicted, homeless, and feel like an outcast however that is. Continue to be with those that are grieving losses, so many losses that we've all experienced in the last months. May we all be surrounded by your love. Thank you, O oh God, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We are grateful for this church and all of its ministries and all the good work that comes out of this church. For the work of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, for the Compass Program, for 490 Outreach, and the His Home Bike Riders as they begin their important ride tomorrow.
Keep us all healthy. Keep us all focused on your work. Lastly, we ask that you will fill our leaders with your guidance. Be with the leaders of our state as they make important decisions in the coming weeks. Be with our country and the political system. Soften our hearts, O oh God, to each other. And we ask that you be with our denomination. Especially hold Bishop Beard close in your heart and Superintendent Watkins. We ask that you be with them as they also are making important decisions on how we will move together forward and safely as a church family. Now with all the love and devotion, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for your generous giving into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your financial gifts make all of the difference in this season as we are seeking to reach so much further beyond our church walls with online ministries, with service into our community, into so many different ways and service into our world. Your financial gifts make all of those things go. You can give into the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church ministries with our online uh, giving which is available on our webpage, and that link is right in our comment section. You can use your own bank or credit union's bill pay and just automatically send those gifts in. You can also be in contact with our church office and mail in gifts right into our church office. All of that generous giving makes such a difference. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you again to use your contact form today as a way to put yourself right into this worship and say that you're here and to use that for your prayer requests that you have for our pastors and prayer team. If you haven't already done so, it's not too late to register for Adventure Explorers, our summer intergenerational learning, worship, and fun program. The link for that is right in the comment section. It can also be found on our webpage. Please join with us through this uh, summer adventure that we're having. And then we're going to have a special offering of hope and a special offering today as well for the His Home Children's Home in Haiti and the fundraising bike ride that launches on Monday. Our offering of hope is being brought to us by Kathy Lambden. She is one, she organizes our His Home fundraising bike ride. We'll also have a story from one of the His Home resident children and then be ready to pray with our Douglas Avenue His Home Bike Ride Team. We'll do all of that together here with our offering of hope. Hi there, I'm Kathy Lambden. I'm a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Been here for probably over about 20 years. I'm also on Pastor Parish. Uh, and I'm involved with the this His Home 300-mile uh, bicycle ride. This is the 13th year for the His Home 300-mile bicycle ride to benefit an orphanage in Haiti. And it's called His Home, but the H-I-S stands for Haitian Interdenominational Shelter. We have had to make adjustments this year for the ride due to the virus. There is a group of bike riders in the Springfield area that plan on riding their bicycles 300 miles starting the week of Monday, June 22 and finishing that Friday. We will average about 60 miles a day. There are other groups riding the same number of miles in their local areas. In past years, we have raised between 30 and $80,000 for the orphanage. The orphanage currently has 70 children in their care, which 20 of them have serious medical needs. The bicycle ride came into my life when I needed hope. It was a time when I needed emotional healing. This ride has given me hope in many ways. Several years ago, there was a few of us that visited Haiti. We spent a great deal of time in the orphanage with the children. The children are also full of hope. They're always upbeat and energetic. The orphanage is directed by Hal and Chris Nugster. They have been serving in Haiti since 1999. 
The Nunksers and their trained staff provide for the basic needs of food, shelter, and clothing, as well as education and medical needs. The orphanage continues to need financial assistance. They could also use prayers for the staff and for the children. we have come to a very exciting part of our worship service where we get to bless and commission the His Home Bike Riders who are leaving on their 300 bike ride um, tomorrow. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads in prayer as we celebrate and ask God to shine His protection and glory over our His Home Bike Ride team. Please bow your head. Gracious God, we ask you to be present with the His Home Bike Ride team as they go forth in your name. Protect them all day long and bring them each day home safely. Let your love shine through them as witnesses to your love, so that all who see them riding along the road may see your glory. Almighty God, we ask that you give them strength, endurance, soft seats, and plenty of water and nourishment. Empower them to be your hands and your feet. Help them to glorify you with every pedal and every mile. Protect them, O oh God. Loving God, we ask you to be with the children in the His Home Orphanage in Haiti. You know their needs, which are great. May the money earned from this ride change their life in many positive ways. Keep these children safe and nourished and happy and protected. May they know they are loved, love that is shown in so many ways but in this way with our His Home Riders. Oh God, we ask you to bless each of our riders. Be with Kathy Landon. Shower her with your blessing, oh God. Erin Emery, shower her with your blessing, oh God. Gay Seibert, shower her, oh God, with your blessings. Jim Bogue, shower him, with your blessings, O oh God. Trish Kalmetz, shower her with your blessing, O oh God. Rich Seibert, shower him, O oh God, with blessings. Also loving God, may your hand of protection be with other team riders. Mary Grant, Dr. Bevel, Robin Halfley, John Hamilton, and Ruth Ann Hamilton. O oh God, bring them safely home and let their experience make a difference to the children and may it also enrich us so that we too will glorify you by serving our community in the love of Christ. Amen. Please stand and join in our final hymn, Bring Forth the Kingdom. of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice. 
So much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for this exciting time of worship that we've had with so many things to celebrate. Thank you for the way that you've participated. I remind you that we love you and we want to connect with you, to support you in your walk of faith, to connect you with opportunities for service and living that faith out in the world. So please use your contact form. Let us connect with you and pray with you and be a part of that journey. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that you are a precious and beloved child of God, no matter what. That Jesus offers you hope and called you forward to live into that love in everything that you do and that the Holy Spirit empowers you for living out that love today and every day in this world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.